Welcome to In the Booth with Golden Boy. Hey world, welcome to In the Booth. I'm Golden Boy and thank you so much for joining me today for the quote unquote relaunch of this illustrious, once illustrious podcast. That's not entirely true. I did do a couple episodes. I tried to do a couple things. It just never really worked out. But I, if there's one thing I love. Uh, it, it, it's podcasting. I, I love podcasting. I just think it's so cool. And I simply just wanted to do something again. I figured, why not? Uh, I travel a lot for my job. In case of you guys don't know, I'm a professional esports commentator. In case you've, you're just stumbling across this for the first time and you're like, who the hell is this guy? And why is he popping up, you know, on my Instagram feed or my Twitter feed or my Twitch feed or my Apple iPod? Oh, wait, people don't have iPods anymore. iPhone feed, whatever. App Store. Speaking of, uh, you guys can go ahead and follow me if you get a chance. Uh, on all the social medias like Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, at GoldenBoyFTW. Pretty easy to remember. Everything uh, is at GoldenBoyFTW. Facebook as well. I barely use that, though. Uh, SoundCloud, uh, it's In The Booth Show. But you can also uh, check out my personal SoundCloud at GoldenBoyFTW. I really don't post anything on there. Maybe I should. I don't know. We'll see how this goes first. Let's, let's, let's do one thing right at the start. And then we'll, we'll, we'll start thinking about other things. But anyway. So, uh, you know, am I back? Like, is this, is this it? Are we doing this again? When I first started doing In the Booth, or when I came up with the, um, the name, and, and just not, not a concept, because, I mean, it's not revolutionary. I'm just doing a podcast, for Christ's sake. Uh, but when I first came up with the uh, name for it and everything, it was supposed to be me and my buddy Benson. Uh, Benson's a very busy guy, uh, as am I, really. And it was just hard to coordinate, get the quality uh, that I was looking for. Uh, but I've always really had an attachment to the name In The Booth. I've always enjoyed that name. So I figured, why the hell not? Why not just keep it going? Tried a couple episodes on my own. And, you know, like, I'll bring guests on eventually. I, I don't really have a, a game plan there. I, I more, more really want to just just talk about stuff, you know, and, and it's weird too, because I don't really know like how to categorize this podcast. Uh, part of me is like, oh yeah, you know, it's a video game podcast. And the other part's like, you know, but you're not really going to talk only about video games. I don't know. I have no idea, but I'll figure it out. You know, I'm probably going to list it under video games just because it's probably easier, but I would really like to, uh, kind of just get people involved in talking and having, you know, some kind of intellectual dialogue from a non-intellectual, if you know what I mean. So, what's the show about? Well, it's a little bit about video games, a little bit about esports, a little bit about wrestling, basically whatever the hell I want to talk about. Uh, and you'll even kind of get the feel for that as the uh, you know, podcast continues for the first episode of the second relaunch of my fourth podcast that I attempted to do. I, you know, I've always had this like weird infatuation with podcasts. I find the medium to just be so uh, thrilling because for the longest time, I thought podcasts were kind of like an ancient, <laughs> uh, an ancient, uh, you know, like form of entertainment, right? Where it's like, oh, who listens to podcasts? No, it turns out millions of people listen to podcasts because people have to take the train or they drive or whatever. And yes, you can listen to music, but hey, why not listen to the ramblings of a comedian or, you know, ex-professional wrestler or, you know, uh, stories from NPR or whatever. I think it's I think it's all really cool. I think it's a, a, a an art form and uh, like I said before, a medium that will truly never go away. Because as long as there is an opportunity to consume audio, people will be podcasting. 
right? There's always this like added emphasis on video. And don't get me wrong, video is very important as well. But there's just something about audio that just, you know, just gets the, the loins burning. In any case, I'm going to be traveling quite a bit uh, coming up. Got some big announcements relatively soon. Uh, I'm sure by the time I am filming or recording, excuse me, the uh, next episode, the news will be out already. Uh, I am going to put this out probably on a Sunday, but I am contemplating saving it for Monday morning and then, you know, going from there and then uploading like every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, Reason for that. It's because of my lifestyle, man. It's because of what I do for a living. I'm a professional esports commentator, and I travel nonstop. I'm going to be gone for weeks coming up. Luckily for me, a microphone is not that hard to transport, so I'm going to be taking this microphone with me pretty much wherever I go. And it shouldn't be that difficult to, you know, kind of connect it to my laptop and then just record some stuff. And maybe I'll have some guests with the people that I'm, like, actually working with. Uh, That'll be pretty cool. I've been trying to be a bit more social as of late with like sharing things. For the longest time, it just, it was a challenge for me to just kind of like bust out a camera and just take a picture and be like, hey man, look at me, I'm in this dope place, bro, you know? And that's like the sound, I that's the voice I make. When I'm when I'm taking a picture and putting it up on Instagram, but then I, I I started to like realize like I could have fun with this, like I could I could do the things that I would normally do because if I do something like it's gotta look good, it's gotta sound good. Um, I'm like really really uh, particular about those details. It has to sound good, or else what the hell is the point? Of even doing it to begin with. What it has got to look good. What's the reason you post it up if it don't look good? Period. I'm I'm a sucker for quality, guys. I try my best. So I've been trying to get a bit more social, putting stuff on on Instagram, and I'm like getting artistic with like the text and the colors and emojis and stuff like that. You know, it's not bad. It's pretty cool. Uh, I've been having fun with that. People have been enjoying it as well. Um, you know, and I'm trying like... I, I I wanted to experiment with the idea of vlogging. But I couldn't... I could not for the life of me walk around with a camera the way like a guy like Casey Neistat does. I couldn't walk around with a camera like that. I don't know. Like whenever I watch one of his videos, I look at the people who are around him. And, like, what are they doing? And most of the time, they look freaking confused. They look lost. They're like, why is this crazy man talking to a camera? And why is he wearing glasses indoors? Why am I whispering? Like, that's just what I think. I look at those people, and that's what I think. So, I figured micro-vlogging. Posting stuff on Instagram stories, which, by the way, I'm going to be very blunt here and just say, Instagram stories, way better than Snapchat. And don't get me wrong, I like Snapchat. It, it was a cool idea. But Instagram stories, like as a person who values data tracking, way more valuable. And there you hear my dog Stella in the background. She's just barking away. Stella is probably one of the loudest dogs ever. In fact, just a little side note story. So the other day, I see my brother. Uh, this is before I took my trip to Le Mans, France for the Forza event. And, you know, we're hanging out. It's me, him, my wife. And he tells me, oh, I got a new dog. I'm like, oh, really? What's her name? Her name's Canela. For those of you people out there, Canela, Spanish for cinnamon. Okay? Yes. I speak three words of Spanish, but that's neither here nor there. So, Canela, tiny, tiny Pomeranian. I'm not even going to lie to you. I think it's a Pomeranian. I mean, it, it might as well just, just it's a, you know, like a miniature creature. You know, th- that's, that's the kind of dog that, like, evolution just doesn't look kindly upon. 
Because at least Stella, like if I put Stella out in the wild, she'll find a way to live. She'll find a way to live. She might die, but she'll find a way to live. For like a little while. But Canela, nah. She's out there. She gets bit by a cockroach. Eaten by a mouse. And this sounds horrible. I know, this sounds all just horrible things. But that is just how tiny she is. So anyway, my brother tells me that the dog has an annoying bark. And I thought, oh, damn, man. His bark has to be like, if it's anything like Stella, dear God. It, like, I, I feel so bad for him. No, no. The dog literally is like, he brings it outside. Her. I shouldn't, I was so mean. Brings her outside, is holding her on his arm. Meanwhile, this dog weighs maybe two pounds soaking wet. Maybe two pounds soaking wet. Soaking wet. Moist. Fitted in once an episode. And Canella starts barking. And she she's like, I'm not even lying to you. Like, how low and annoying. I mean, don't get me wrong. Annoying below. Annoying but low. And she's a little faster. That was it. That was it. And I was like, You're, you think this is annoying? Stella woke up our entire floor one time. Because she probably heard some dust move in the hallway. Because Stella's ears are essentially sonic tuned to hear the sound of light travel across a room. And yet he's complaining about that. If my brother's listening, one, I love you. Two, she's low. It's a little low. Anyway, so let's actually talk about some video game stuff here. It's been about 12 minutes of just nothing name. Nothing ning. Nothing ning. That's a new word. Book it. All right. I bought a Nintendo Switch. One of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my entire life. The Nintendo Switch is a... It's so brilliantly designed. It, it actually frustrates me. That we live in an age where I could take console level graphics and bring it with me wherever I go. So I bought the Nintendo Switch because I uh, wanted to get Splatoon. My dumb face didn't even realize that Splatoon doesn't come out until July 21st. I thought it was already out. The reason why I bought the darn thing to begin with was because I saw Splat- the Splatoon tournament at E3 and I was legitimately into it. I was like, yo, this is actually like really sick. I didn't I, I really didn't think that I was gonna enjoy watching it. And and you know, it kind of sucked like the chat was like, lol, Splatoon, lol. Like, listen. If you're typing lol into a Twitch chat, okay? And for those of you who are uneducated, lol is basically like a sarcastic way of laughing, you know? It's like, lol, you know? You don't say like, oh, that's funny, ha ha ha. No, it's lol. And, and here's the thing now with this generation, everything is cringe. Oh, my God. Everything to these people is cringe. Like, do they have... No social experience with other human beings that aren't typing lul into a Twitch chat. Seriously. Not everything is cringe, you dillweed. Anyway, I digress. So I'm watching the Splatoon tournament. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, this is legit. And I had a blast watching it. So I don't know if I was the only one who was influenced. But you know what? I went out, I bought it. I bought the Switch. And I got Legend of Zelda. I got Mario Kart 8 because you needs it. You needs it. And then I picked up ARMS. And of the games, Legend of Zelda 
and Mario Kart were seeing more play until last night. Last night. I decided to play some ARMS. And uh, I got hooked. At first, I was like, yeah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the, you know, the Joy-Cons and just punch to the air. And I was like, wait, I'm too fat. I can't do this. So, connected the Joy-Cons up, put them into the uh, controller, and I just started gaming. And let me tell you, that was so fun. So unbelievably fun. I could not believe it. And then I started doing research. And of course, I found the Reddit for it. And I found tier lists. And then I found competitions that just occurred. And I'm watching tournaments. And I'm doing all this stuff. And I was like, well, there you go. I'm hooked. Another thing for my wife to hate me for. <laughs> it's super fun, though. I, I thought it was great. I was I was actually, like, really, really into it. And then this kind of, like, led to my thought process here. What is the potential for the Nintendo Switch and esports? Like, can can it happen? I don't know. Like, I want it to happen. I think I think it could be great for an entire generation of of new fans of esports to just get engaged and and like really enjoy something uh, that doesn't really involve violent video games. Don't get me wrong, you know your boy loves some violent video games. Well, Call of Duty World War Two, by the way. Ugh, ugh. That's that was like the sound I made when I played COD World War Two. Just I was playing it. I was at the E three four, and I was just like. Sir, how do you enjoy the game? Ugh. Sir, I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Ugh. Sir? Sir, please. You're scaring me. Ugh. Ugh. You know, I was like, Ugh. That was like, that was a sound whenever I got a kill in that game. I was like, Ugh. Like that. I made that, that like really, really like odd sound, you know? Like I'm trying to push out a poop or something like that. Ugh. It was so good. That, that was that was my experience. But anyway, so I was, you know, I, I'm thinking like, hey, this is a good way to kind of introduce a new generation of esports, get them engaged, get them involved. I think there's something here. I think there's something here. So I'm I'm particularly excited about the prospect of the Nintendo Switch, and I love that damn thing. And I'm taking it with me on my long trip. It's gonna be awesome. I was playing Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild um, uh, with the with the controllers attached to the Switch, uh, to the Switch like tablet, and I just thought, dude, how ridiculous is this that years and years ago we were making fun of Sega for the Game Gear, <laughs> which was essentially the same size as the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> We were making fun of them for the game gear. It's too big, man. Like, who's going to put this in their pocket, dude? No one can. And, and here's the thing. Back then, we had bigger pockets. Because your boy was wearing baggy jeans, relaxed fit. You know what I'm saying? That hardcore boot cut jean. We had bigger pockets. We were wearing cargo shorts back then. I mean, some people still are. Hashtag John Cena. But that's what people were doing. And now we're out here praising the Switch. For, for, like, basically forcing you to carry a book bag wherever you go. And I'm okay with that. Because I already take my book bag everywhere I go anyway. But how insane is that? That, like, we just come full circle on things. <laughs> like, I, I'm not gonna lie. I think someone from Nintendo looked at the Game Gear and was like, You know, they were on to something. You know who wasn't on to something, though? That'd be the Engage. Oh, God. What a bad idea. You know, like, poor Nokia. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the greatest handheld console of all time. It's called the N-Gage. And everyone's like, wait a minute, but like, why? Well, it's a, it's a cell phone that you can play games on. With a controller. But why would I just carry my Game Boy and my phone? And then like years later, 
Steve Jobs walks up. Ladies and gentlemen, the iPhone. You're just like, this is the greatest idea ever created by man. Right here, right now. It doesn't get any better than this. It's the next level. And meanwhile, Nokia's over there like, but guys, do you want actual buttons? No, screw that. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Technology's weird. You see something pop up and you're just like, dude, that's like a great idea. And then like it just flops. Complete flops. And then it's five years later, like Google or Apple or Microsoft comes out with something. And everyone's like, it was a brilliant idea. They're like, what? You didn't like what? <laughs> so anyway, Nintendo Switch. Awesome. Love the damn thing. Uh, taking it wherever I go. I've pretty much been playing that nonstop. Uh, I did actually uh, pick up uh, Lawbreakers. Lawbreakers, fun game. Really interested to see where that goes, uh, esports wise. Most importantly, though, I'm interested to see where it goes game wise. I actually think the game is pretty awesome. Like the the tone and and the music. There's one thing that you can get me with in a game, and I don't know if I'm the only one, but. If there's one thing you can get me with, it's music in a game. Oh, man. I go, mm, when I have, like, good music in the game. Mm, that Overwatch music. Mm, Halo. Mm, Lawbreakers. That's that's what I think. Um, wait, I don't know. When you, like, present something and it looks good. That really gets me excited. Because, like, I look at Lawbreakers, for example, and their menu is, it's actually really nice. I, I really enjoy their menu, uh, like, just the, the, the opening menu, right? Where, like, you select, like, play or go to your stash or whatever. Uh, it's clean. It's simple. It doesn't look, it, it looks like they put effort into it. Like, they thought, like, hey, this is the first thing that people will see when they open or, or turn on our game. So let's make it pretty badass for them. And I think that's what Blizzard thought too. They were like, when people open our game, we want them to feel like they're looking at like a finished product. And, and I don't mean this is a knock to a lot of other games, but, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of like the, the menu where like everything's like a block and then like it's like, you know, purchase this, buy that, play here. Uh, a lot of MOBAs have that. And I'm not really wild about it. Call me a traditionalist. You know, just... Sir, just call me a traditionalist. Because I love my UI like I love my coffee. Traditional. I don't even know what that means. But yeah. I don't know. I like it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. By the way. You know. Uh, speaking of lawbreakers. Gotta talk about this Donald Trump stuff. <laughs> I don't know where the connection is, but we've made it happen. Uh, so today, uh, Donald Trump posted a a, uh, a a meme. He he posted a meme. It wasn't like a cute meme, too, you know. It was literally the the meme, and the reason why I'm speaking about this is because it has to do with wrestling, kind of. Um, it's when he was at WrestleMania, and it was, uh, I believe, Bobby Lashley versus. Brock, I want to say. I don't remember that. I stopped watch, watching wrestling around that time. Stone Cold was a referee. And uh, Trump was apparently the good guy. <laughs> and he attacked Vince McMahon. And uh, what he did was... Uh, why, he didn't actually make it. Because I've, I've seen this gif before. But it was the uh, CNN logo on Vince McMahon's face. And he like body slams uh, Vince McMahon. Um, yeah, that was a thing. Like, that that happened today. And it's funny, because as a fan of professional wrestling, I mean, let me tell you right now, uh, your boy just does not sell the Stone Cold Stunner very well. There's also another gif going around of Stone Cold stunning him. And, yeah, I mean, that was really bad. He, he didn't even take the bump properly. Like, come on. R literally unelectable. Unelectable at that point. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to say this, um, you know, I don't know uh, how much people like uh, hearing 
political commentary for a video game show. And again, I don't even know if this is a video game show. So I'm just going to be very upfront with you. I like video games. I just like talking about stuff. I literally talked about the sounds I make when playing a game. And then I talked about, you know, my, my brother's dog who barks, you know, kind of like, like her face was just stuff of cotton balls. So I'm just going to say this. Um, you know, I don't, I, I try not to get into the political discussion so much on social media, on Twitter, because I do think it's a bit volatile. People have their perspective, they have their opinion, and, you know, at this point, it's less about the policies, and it's more about just feeling like you're winning. That's really what it is. That's what politics is at this point. It's not about like, oh, hey, you know, this health care bill really isn't that good. Or like, hey, you know, like maybe there isn't anything with the with the Russia Trump conspiracy. It's just about winning and losing. Right. Um, and that's sad. That's really sad. Uh, because it's kind of just become a mudslinging contest and it's and it's on both sides it's not just the right or the left it's it's both sides and one's caught in the middle guys like me who don't really care they just want to see good policies and people being taken care of that's that's what i care about you know i care about those things so i'm just going to say you know there's been a lot of discussion about like, oh man, with the leader of the free world, he's out here just putting out these like really messed up tweets. And what am I supposed to tell my daughter, man? What am I going to tell her? I don't know. You're the parent. Just do the right thing and set a great example. Who the hell takes freaking advice from Donald Trump? Look, as a New Yorker, The consensus over here, for the most part, is that, you know, the guy's kind of a blowhard. And no one takes, like, advice from him. Don't, don't, like, you shouldn't be looking at the president to raise your children. Just tell them. Hey, ignore that crap. Respect women, Billy. Or, hey, Karen, don't be... A douche. That's parental advice for you right there from a guy who doesn't have kids. But that's just that's just my belief. You could believe whatever you want to believe. And this could be a very controversial uh, topic. And people may hate me or never listen to this again. But, you know. I just think it's important to kind of have the conversation. I think it's important to get engaged in politics. For young people especially. I think it's very important to get involved. And when you get involved, just bring a switch, dog. Bring a switch and just say, hey, you, the guy on the other side of the table, I'll take this blue controller, you take that red controller, and then we'll battle it out in some Mario Kart Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. Because if that is one thing that Nintendo does well, it's bringing people together anyway but enough about that though just felt like i had to say it i saw it on twitter and i was just like what i what this is weird is this is this like the times we're living in now so you know i i i believe in the common sense party of of politics you know just hey do the right thing be chill be chill dog that's it. Done. Easy. Keep it nice and trill. Oh, God. Uh, final thoughts moving away from the cesspool that is American politics. Uh, Calvin Harris' new album. Shout out to my boy Ghost, who suggested it to me. Uh, Funk Waves Volume 1, I believe it's called. Let me see here real quick. I have my computer right next to me. Uh, Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1. Bangers. Ten songs all bangers top bangers though slide rolling feels bangers 
So good. So good. You know, Skirt on Me's not bad. Hard to Love's not bad either. But Feels, Big Sean's, his whole verse, banger. Period. Check it out if you get a chance. It's on Spotify right now. What's not a banger is 444. Jay-Z, come on, dog. Streets have changed, dude, dog. Uh, you can apparently go to 444.title.com, type in Sprint uh, as a promo code, and then whatever email you want, and then you could download the album for free. It's like, whoa, huge oversight there. I already got it. I'm going to listen to it. I only heard like the first two tracks, wasn't really feeling it all that much. It's kind of average, but you know, apparently it's just like him roasting Kanye, and I'm just, I'm just not into that stuff, you know? You just put out bangers. That's why I like Funk Wave Bounces, bro. It's just it's just good tunes. Music you could just bop your head to. Feel good. That's the kind of stuff that that I want to listen to. But you know, we live in a we live in an age where it's all about roasting people, man. It's all about drama. Drama alert. Getting that views. Getting them views. Can't even speak English. I mean, what I spoke earlier wasn't English either, but whatever. That's really what it's all about these days. You know, it's why, like, I don't really have any, like, crazy expectations for this podcast. Because, you know, I really just want to, like, promote, like, a chill kind of environment uh, where I could just talk about stuff. Because, to me, that's what's, you know, what I want to do. I really don't care about going out there and causing some drama, you know? And I'm not even like, yo, man, positive vibes, bro. Not even really about that. He's just like, don't be a douche, you know? I should just get that as a t-shirt. I'll just wear it for myself. It'll just be like, don't be a douche. Be pretty, be pretty clear, pretty blunt, you know? But anyway, if you made it this far, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, Share it with your friends. Let them know. Let them know what's going on. You can check it out on iTunes. Check it out on iTunes. It's uh, In The Booth show or In The Booth, I think, on iTunes. We're there, you know, also on SoundCloud, you know, platforms that the young kids use. Figured why not. And if you like it, uh, what's most important to me is if you happen to enjoy it, like just leave a comment in SoundCloud. Um, you don't even need to subscribe to it on, on iTunes. If you do, cool. Right? I, I'm down with you. But if if you like it and you're just like, hey, this wasn't bad, just leave me a comment, dude. That's all I really need. So now I know like, I'm not wasting my time and I could just keep doing this stuff. I mean, I'm going to keep doing it anyway, but it's kind of nice to just know that people are like, hey, man, I dig what you're selling. You know? Easy. Easy life. In any case, so guys... Uh, thank you so much once again, and if you want to check me out, you could follow me on Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, at GoldenBoyFTW. You can also uh, check me out there, Facebook, and I pretty much go at GoldenBoyFTW for everything. New announcements coming out this week, too. Uh, I'm sure for the next episode, we'll go ahead and talk about it. You can expect that on Wednesday. Yeah, you can expect it on Wednesday. We'll We'll try and make it happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. This has been the relaunch of the first episode of the second 30th season of In the Booth. Thank you, guys. Love you. Take it easy. Peace.